<laughs> Let's go, you f***ing what a dickhead. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Today's a big one. We're working on the Daihatsu again. Today, it is going down to the dyno. We're trying to get some massive, massive power out of this little three-cylinder engine. And after that, we're gonna be hitting up the track. So what we're taking, we need, we're gonna grab some spares, we're gonna grab some oils, some fluids, all the stuff you should take with you on a dyno session. Plus, is there any spares, any stuff you think might blow up? Take a spare so you don't waste your time. Let's go. It's time to see what this rusty nugget can do now that we've poured way too much time, effort and money into it. Now, can you run this engine with a stock ECU? Absolutely, but the data logging, sensors, customizable dash and live tuning is what levels us up into race car territory. We're looking for reliability and consistent track times and that's gonna be made possible with a good tune. So Scott from Haltech is gonna work his magic and hopefully we don't break his dyno with our massive amounts of power. I'm on the dyno with Scott Hilsinger, otherwise known as Tuning Fork. We've got the little Daihatsu set up and ready to tune. A little bit different this one. A little bit. We're going for longevity. We don't need to focus too much on the power this thing's going to make because it will tune it, it'll make the power relative, it'll, it'll make as much as it can make relatively it easily. It needs to go around the track for as long as possible, as reliably as possible. All right, so because it's aspirated, it's not a huge amount of load cells, what we're going to do is we're going to spend a little bit of time tuning the power part of it. It'll mm -hmm. come pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we'll spend a heap of time on longevity, okay. on picking the right ignition timing numbers to be able to hold the thing wide open throttle for minutes at a time with yes. no uh, cooling. Yes. Um, we'll pick the right target air fuel ratio so that you can get the best fuel economy out of it because mm -hmm. I think that's going to be important. Yeah. Um, You're doing a whole day of track, man, that's what you want. As well as yeah. the right amount of fuel going into it to power the engine, but to then use a little bit of extra fuel to keep the thing cool. Yes, without burning through your entire tank in 10 laps. Spot on. Okay, all right, man. I'll let you work your magic. I'm excited to see what happens. Yes. So, Scotty, are we struggling to make 30 kilowatts at the front wheels? It is a little engine. It's a little old aspirated engine, so we've got to be reasonable. You don't need to make excuses for old Daihatsu's. That's my job. Truthfully, I was, um, I was couldn't remember on the dyno screen how to measure, so I had it set up to start displaying from 50 kilowatts onwards, oh. and I couldn't remember how to make it display from zero to 30. It's worth mentioning um, one of my very nerdy Daihatsu friends told me that these were rated from the factory to 40.5 kilowatts, which is not at the wheels figure. So we're actually in the ballpark, even though it's fairly disappointing. It's also worth mentioning the car weighs nothing. So we call it 25 kilowatts at the wheels, yep. give or take now. Yep. And we've had this kind of power in the midget and it was a cracker. Yeah, minus so, a few losses. So yeah, we're, we're bang on. Yeah, we're on. All right, let's get going. Page up, page up, page up. 
Yeah, 29 kilowatts. Whoa. 10 degrees everywhere. Crack 30 for sure. 30 kilowatts. 30. Beautiful. Look at that power curve, man. It's like wood. Two pounds, two pounds, two pounds. Wow. The air's hot though, eh? All right, we're gonna open the bonnet. Um, that's all working as Scotty would expect, which is really good news. We're getting a little bit more torque and power each time. 30 kilowatts is about what this engine gives you. It's a very, very light car, so it's actually fine on the road. If you drive one on the road, they feel powerful, even though they're not. Uh, but our air temp is high. It did occur to me as I was coming here today, it's like a oh, stock air box, maybe it's gonna hold us back. But I didn't wanna mess with a cold air system to potentially lose power. I'd rather know what it makes now and then make changes. So to do that in a cheetah mode, we're just gonna lift the bonnet and see if all that extra airflow helps. Then we can uh, you know, try removing snorkels and messing around the intake a little bit more to see what happens. But what definitely doesn't work is just a pod filter slapped on the top of it because then you make your problems even worse than the factory one. So as you can see, not actually a terrible factory intake system. You've got the pickup here, which is behind the headlight. When you're going down the road, you are gonna get a lot of cold air here, but also importantly for a factory car, you're not gonna pick up water. If you put a pod filter right down near the wheel and you go through a big puddle, it's all over. So this isn't terrible, but look, it is a bit small and it could be improved upon. So by putting the bonnet up, we're gonna get way more air in here. Then we can try a run with this snork disconnected. Then we can even try one, like no filter or whatever we need to do to try and see what this is capable of and see if it is actually holding us back. If it's one or two kilowatts, it might not be worth chasing. If it's five, absolutely. That's no air filter now. Yeah. Oh, honestly, then was well here uh, less than one percent, a, a, a half a percent gain. So now you want to see the air box is restrictive. Yep. So give another hit now. Yeah, I reckon. The factory intake's that bad, eh? Um, I'd rather feed some nice cold air to that, or is that significant? Uh, per Percentage-wise, I don't know how. I don't know how you what what you can do about that well, quickly, but mate, just between there and there, between thirty-five hundred and five grand picked up it picked up 2.6 percent okay enough that if that was ignition timing i'd be like oh yeah let's give it some more let's okay do so more. do you want me to put the intake back on take the air filter out yes that's yeah. a good idea figure out where it's gone wrong so we're just experimenting with our intake to work out if the factory one is in fact a restriction the filter's okay not great probably needs a new one um, this is a sort of environment where yes a high flow filter might actually be worthwhile in a lot of cars it's not because it's not actually what's holding you back, but in our case, it might actually now be the restriction. So by taking the filter out, we can work out whether it's the airbox or just a dirty filter or just a shitty filter that needs to be replaced. But I actually don't think it's that bad, but Scotty reckons it's picked up a little bit of torque, so it's definitely worth investigating. We're looking pretty good. That the torque curve is just—it's just dead flat. You press the button, it makes 30 kilowatts of the wheels. Yeah, love um, it. Which is what—that's about right. Without a turbo, without ethanol, without any breathing mods, and with a basic exhaust system, that's what I would expect. So we're in the ballpark with a fresh engine, man. It's healthy. There's no smoke. There's nothing leaking out of it. This should be good to just thrash all day long, which right. is what I want. It feels good, and all the mixtures are reports, so everything's doing what it's told. We put timing in, yep. we're drawing straight lines yes. right on top of each other. Great. We're targeting different mixtures, our lines are dead flat, everything's working perfect, so. Love it, man. I'd be inclined to say that's kind of where we're at. I'll that's do tuned. some 
touching up. Yeah. Uh, make sure all of our starting's nice, make sure all that sort of stuff's yep. there. Scotty, how many snack packs would it take to get you to come to the track and do some more R&D at the track oh, with us? snack pack. Less Can I entice you with a snack pack and get you there? Less than one. Okay, done. Go halves with someone. Come and come with us then. That's the next step, man, is to go to the track. All right. Keen. Let's go yeah. do some laps. Rad. While it's entirely possible that we won't even go above the legal speed limit in this thing, we're taking it back to the track for a shakedown so we can keep it off the streets. We're not actually racing, but we do want to see if it's as fast as it sounds. And straight away we worked out that this body kit was more drag and less aero, so it was time for it to get chopped. And with that done, now it's time to give it a proper drive. But first things first, I'm going to take Scott out for a lap of the track to make sure all our work on the dyno has paid off. First gear to stay there. Second gear. Third. Fourth. Fifth if you can. All right. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Did we just set up? We just set up our speedo, which we're using a Haltech GPS module. So we've got the GPS that's getting the speed in, then we've got our engine RPM and the yes. only thing that's joining the speed from the wheels and the engine is the gearbox and the gear ratios. Yeah. So I've set it up and then just gone through it. We've driven in first gear. If I hit calibrate, it looks at our road speed, it looks at our engine RPM, we do our calibration. Via a satellite. I mean, as in we're getting the data from it's a satellite. It's pretty crazy, eh? I like this future that we're in because we get to get the world's shittiest Daihatsu and do that kind of Man, stuff. There is some serious technology in here now. <laughs> so good. And it's working perfectly. Third gear. Yep, shift down to second, picks it up. Awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you, mate. We've got all our gauges in there as well now. You've got oil pressure, oil temp, cool yep. temp, oil temperature, important yep. one. Very. It's really easy to see. Exactly what you want, and a big taco in the middle. The speed is there, but I don't often find myself looking at speed unless I'm trying yeah. to like get a speed through a corner, which is a quick glance. I don't need to yeah. have it there the whole time. Things like particular speeds for braking markers, yeah. but it might not be a the mission. The one thing that we might do is the taco there. We might reassign the taco values. Yep. Um, because we'll look at the limiter, and we might move all of that around. to get you in here to like check that you're happy and then right send it and then if something falls out we've done we've got and we've sort of done our best you know all right enough techie stuff it's time for a thrash all right all my hats and nugget let's go
driving lessons. <laughs> what a great little car. I reckon I'm starting to run out of tire. Absolutely love these cars. This was the car and model that started Mighty Car Mods, uh, and for those reasons, um, I absolutely love them. I just love these little Daihatsus. I love everything they stand for, uh, and I'm really also proud to have a bunch of mates that really love these cars as much as I do, and Marty for obviously working on them. And back then, 16 years ago, when no one else cared about these, and I was like, "Man, can you help me make my Daihatsu better?" And he was like, absolutely, no questions, no laughing. It's true mateship. And so that's what this car represents for me. It represents true mateship, true friendship, and I love it. Now it's Marty's turn to thrash this little nugget. Right, time for a hot lap in the little Daihatsu. So far, I love it. I just, it's so relaxing. It sounds stupid because it's like, got no inside, it's noisy. It's not particularly fast, but it just feels so good. It feels like raw and I can feel the exhaust and the engine underneath my right foot when you accelerate. You can feel like vibrating and the tires communicate really, really well what's going on. It is probably a bit over braked at the front. That's to be expected. But you just get to like go 10 tenths at a sensible speed and just feel it.
30 kilowatts. Like, how much more do you need in something that's light like this? So much fun. We've done a few different versions of these kinds of cars over the years from a daily drive through to a full-blown auto salon show car, the Blue Turd which was an overpowered Frankenstein rust bucket and now this MCM fan car which we've reborn from fromage to homage into this mad little track weapon. <laughs> well done man. well done again. It's one of those things sometimes evolution is just returning to the same and I can't believe that 16 years later something like this can still be so exciting and it genuinely is Dude, like i just love it way better than i thought oh I've so been, much better. i've been giving you shit the whole time saying it's a shit car it is absolutely not a shit car yeah it's a great it's car. like and and perfect for what we wanted to do with it i mean it was a bit yuck to look at still kind of is listen to it yeah <laughs> and up here if i just hold it right just pegging it oh, just pegging it that, that suspension setup, like, you know, it's got new coilovers in it, great. The suspension setup of just fine tuning it, that's where some of the, like, the actual yes. excellent is, isn't it? You do not need a whole lot of money, people. No. Get onto Marketplace or wherever you buy your shitty cars. Yep. Find something cheap. Get some mates together if you've got some, or check out some videos. Yeah. Put your car together, get some good suspension, some good tyres. 30 kilowatts, people. 30 kilowatts, and it's so much fun. Like you don't actually need 3,000 horsepower. You don't need 1,000 horsepower. You don't even need 300. If you've got a light car with some good suspension, yeah. it's just raw and visceral. Man, this is it. It's unreal. Now you might be wondering, why does this car exist? Why did we put so much effort into it? You are gonna find out. It's all gonna make sense. And you're gonna have a moment where you're like, oh my God, oh, oh, okay. That is coming soon. <laughs> On Christmas Day, you will see why. You'll see why. Christmas Day, December the 25th, 2023. Biggest. You will understand why this car exists. Biggest thing we've ever done. Yeah, it's going to be great. Bye, All right. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Martin, I love you, mate. You're a legend. So are you, man. And uh, thank you for being uh, on this Daihatsu journey with me. Oh, you don't have to uh, convince me to go on a Daihatsu journey. Daihatsu oh, journey. Listen to it. Listen to it. We do want to acknowledge the MCM fan that made this car inspired by Mighty Car Mods videos that we've made on this channel. It's actually really creative and even if it's not to your taste, he spent a lot of time doing it his way and it was this effort that caught our attention and inspired us to take it to the next level. Yes, we've spent a huge amount of time and money on this car and a lot of you are probably wondering why, but it'll all make sense soon. You'll be seeing a lot more of this car and the incredible journey that it inspired. This is just the beginning.